let us now discuss plasmolysis and deplasmolysis in detail because along with this we will also discuss root pressure, we will also discuss turgidity and flaccidity. So this topic is going to cover all these topics also. So let us discuss first of all what is plasmolysis. Let us read the definition, shrinkage of protoplast of a plant cell from its cell wall under the influence of hypertonic solution is called plasmolysis. So in this case a cell is said to be plasmolyzed when there is shrinkage of the cytoplasm, you know the cytoplasm along with the cell membrane is going to leave this cell wall. When the cytoplasm along with the cell membrane is going to leave this cell wall, why? Because we have put this cell in a solution which is hypertonic solution means the concentration of the solute particles is more, right? So when you put such a cell in a hypertonic solution, there will be osmosis that is going to take place. Now in this case, since inside the cell we have the concentration of water that is more. So water is going to move from a region of higher concentration means from inside the cell to the outside. This is that is why you can say the shrinkage of protoplast of a plant cell is going to take place from its cell wall under the influence of hypertonic solution which we call as plasmolysis. Now this cell is known as a plasmolyzed cell. Why? Because the water molecules they have moved out which has led to the shrinkage of the protoplast which has led to the shrinkage of the cytoplasm and the cytoplasm has left the cell wall and this type of cell is also known as a flaccid cell. It is also known as a flaccid cell. Now this process you can also call it as flaccidity. You can also call it as flaccidity, right? It is a flaccid cell. Now you can see that the central vacuole has, you know, it has shrunk. So the central vacuole shrinks, why? Because we have put this cell into a concentrated solution that is a 10% sucrose solution means it is a hypertonic solution. Now the cell membrane along with the cytoplasm it leaves a cell wall due to which you can say that shrinkage has taken place and this cell is known as a plasmolyzed cell or you can say a flaccid cell and this phenomena is known as plasmolysis or you can say flaccidity, right? Now you can simply perform this experiment by taking a cut fresh cut leaf of hydrilla, right? You take that hydrilla leaf and just put that hydrilla leaf into two solutions. One is going to be a hypertonic solution, take sucrose solution and one is going to be a hypotonic solution, just place simply in water, right? So what happens when you place that leaf into water means a hypotonic solution. So the cytoplasm, it is going to get inflated, it is going to get distended more clearly you can say and the central vacuole reappears and this process is known as deplasmolysis. When you are going to put the same cell, the same leaf or you can say the section of the leaf into water means a hypotonic solution, then again the central vacuole is going to appear and the cell is going to be in fully distended state and this is known as deplasmolysis and this stage when no more water can be accommodated because it's a hypotonic solution outside means the water is going to enter from outside to inside. Why? Because the concentration of water is more outside than inside. So water is going to enter into the cell which is going to make this cell in completely distended state means it has no capacity that more water molecules can enter inside. So this stage is known as a deplasmolyzed stage or more properly you can say a turgid cell or the process is known as turgidity. It's a turgid cell and the process is known as turgidity. Now I hope that this is clear to you what is plasmolysis. 
in a plasmolysed cell, uh, cell you can say that it, there is shrinkage of the protoplasm. Right? Why? Because we have put the cell into a hypertonic solution and the movement of water is going to be from inside to outside. So, water is going to move from inside to outside due to which the shrinkage is taking place. And this cell is known as a plasmolysed cell or you can say a flaccid cell. And the process is known as plasmolysis or you can say flaccidity. Then the opposite happens. When you are going to put the same cell supposedly into water means a hypertonic solution. Then the water is going to enter from outside to inside. So this is going to lead to the distended state of the cell. Cytoplasm gets inflated or you can say distended and the central vacuole reappears and this is known as a deplasmolysed cell or a turgid cell and the process is known as deplasmolysis or turgidity. Now when we talk about turgidity in case of a turgid cell, this cell cannot accommodate more water molecules to come inside, right? This cell cannot accommodate more water molecules to come inside. Now when the root cells, they are in the turgid state, right? They develop a pressure that we call as root pressure. What do we call as? root pressure. So, when the root cells, the cells that are there in the root, they become fully turgid, they are going to exert pressure. Due to that pressure, water is going to move upwards through the xylem vessel, right? So, that pressure is known as root pressure. So, how will you define root pressure? The pressure that is developed in the root cells and the cells are turgid due to which, due to this root pressure, the water is going to move upwards, right? So, that is known as root pressure, the pressure that is developed in the cells of the root when they are fully turgid due to which the water is going to move upwards is known as root pressure, right? So, turg turgid cells of the root, they are going to develop a pressure that we call as root pressure. So, you can perform this experiment, you can see a plasmolyzed cell and a deplasmolyzed cell under the microscope by taking freshly plucked leaves and putting them into hypertonic solution, for example, sucrose solution and then into hyper, hypertonic solution that is water, simply water, pure water and you will see how the protoplasm is going to shrink in case of a plasmolyzed cell and how it again comes into a distended state in a deplasmolyzed state, right? So, this is known as a turgid cell or the phenomena is known as turgidity, right? And this is how turgidity is linked with root pressure. Now, when we have a fully turgid cell, this the, the turgid cell protoplast is going to exert some pressure on the walls. It is going to exert some pressure on the walls and in turn the cell wall which is elastic it is also going to exert some pressure. So, this pressure is going to balance each other and the cell is now in an equilibrium state. But if the balance is disturbed the cell can even burst, right? The cell can even burst. So, remember that in case of turgid cell a pressure is exerted by the protoplast protoplast towards the wall of the cell and that pressure is known as turgor pressure. That pressure is known as turgor pressure. And what is root pressure? The pressure exerted by the turgid cells of the root by which, because of which you can say the water is going to move upwards through the xylem is known as root pressure. So, I hope by understanding what is plasmolysis and deplasmolysis in detail, you are familiar with what is flaccidity, what is turgidity, what is turgor pressure and what is root pressure. So, I hope that these concepts are clear to you and just learn these definitions by heart, they are important.